فلذلك فدع واستقم كما أمرت ولا تتبع أهواءهم وقل آمنت بما أنزل الله من كتاب الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين So we started up in the book of Dura Tulbiyan and we came to the, the fourth chapter here, which is a very, very important chapter, which is the Manahaj al Tulaki and Walayat Tisamu Bi Sunnah, Bil Kitabi Wa Sunnah. And so this is the way, the Manahaj, which is like the way of going about something. Uh, Tulaki, which is um, like receiving. How do we receive? Like, how do we get our information about the deen? And holding an air to some, which is um, like Isma, is something like seeking refuge or having something like protecting. Uh, so air to some is something that uh, is like seeking refuge inside of the, and then of course with holding, and also encompasses holding fast to um, uh, Al Kitab wa Sunnah, which is the Quran and the Sunnah. And so this is a very, very important chapter here, this, this chapter 4, which is like the way of receiving information and holding fast to the Quran and Sunnah. This is one of the most important chapters because every single group of bid'ah has gone against uh, Ahl al-Sunnah and jamaah in this, in, in this section. And this is something that is, that is very key because where do we get our information about Allah? And this is something that, of course, nobody should, um, nobody should have really any um, qualms about like this. But this is what happens when uh, but some of the differences that come up with like the groups of bid'ah, they come up where people um, try to, uh, they, they make mistakes in this. And this is where, uh, this is where like we, we go back to. And of course, Allah, Allah is uh, in the Quran. He says, if you've had a difference of opinion in anything, then bring it back to Allah and His Messenger. And so this is something that is very, very key for us to always, whatever the difference is, to bring it back to Allah and His Messenger. So we started up with this in our last class, um, and we um, kind of opened up the, opened up the, the, the door to like this book, um, or this section. So we'll, we'll, we'll review just a little bit of it to, to make sure everything comes together in a, like a single cohesive picture, inshallah. And so the author, uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Yusri, Hafid uh, al he says, uh, وَأَهْنَ السُنَّةِ يَتَلَقَّوْنَ عَقِيدَتَهُمْ عَنْ سَحَائِهِ الْمَنْقُولِ وَالْإِجْمَاعِ وَالْمُتَلَقِّ بِالْقَبُولِ وَسَرَائِحُ الْمَعْقُولِ وَسَرَائِحِ الْمَعْقُولِ وَالْفِطْرَةِ الْقَوِيمَةِ And so these are the four, uh, the four things he brings up here. He says that أَهْنَ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعِ They take their aqidah from one, which is authentic narrations, and two, consensus that has been accepted, and three, reason, and like clear reason that it is that is not subject to any like um, debate and also the um, the number four is the upright fitra which is the natural disposition and so of course the authentic narration which is like these are the authentic texts that includes the quran and the sunnah and of course this is the number one like this is the first thing that we take we go back to and if we wanted to look at where um, where all of it goes back to, of course, all of it goes back to the Quran, because this is the word of Allah, and everything that we get from the Quran, and the way that it came to us, so there's no doubt that uh, that it's been perfectly preserved, as well as there's no doubt that uh, that it like what it holds and and its meaning is something that we all go back to, and every Muslim we go back to. And also the, the Sunnah is also found in the Qur'an. So if we look back to, uh, if we take the Qur'an as our, as our, our, our firm holding point, then we see in the Qur'an Allah says, Allah wa Rasul. And also uh, that Allah he tells us to obey Allah and to obey the Messenger. And, uh, and also we can see in, in this that Allah commands us to obey the Messenger. And so the things that come inside of the Qur'an, they also are calling us to obey the Prophet وسلم, which comes in the Sunnah. So anything the Prophet Sallallahu commanded his uh, commanded uh, the Ummah um, to do, then this is something that is also uh, obligatory in us to do because Allah commanded it in the Quran. So of course, like the Sunnah is encompassed in the the general commands of the Quran, and also the consensus, which is the next one that comes up, is that the consensus is also found in the Quran, and this is ijma, is what you will call ijma, and this is consensus that has been reached. And the way that consensus works uh, is that any time that everyone in the Ummah has agreed on something, then after that time, everyone after them 
is bound to agree with them and they can't go um, go away from this. So whenever the consensus happens, then nobody that comes after it can make any change in it because it's a done deal. Uh, and so this is, this is, there's many, like the amount of things that are like have consensus on them are, they're, they're, there's so many that the Ummah has had, um, like we've all agreed that like a uh, Salat is obligatory and that it's five Salat that's obligatory on the, um, that's Fard on, on the people and in many different areas, we've uh, like there's there's an agreement uh, of the the scholars um, in this thing, and of course, like the consensus that we take or we take into consideration, the scholars who in their in their foundation of belief, they go back to the Quran and the Sunnah in taking these two. So like the Shia, if they don't take the Quran and the Sunnah, then if they have a difference of opinion with us, we don't take their opinion into account because they don't take the Sunnah. And so if they don't, they're not taking Bukhari and Muslim or, or like the other hadith that are sahih, if they don't even take this or they think the Sahaba are, uh, are, are, are people that uh, most of them were like disbelievers or something of that sort, then they, they went against us in such a major thing that we don't take their difference in, uh, of opinion into, a, uh, into account. Um, and of course, this consensus is also found in the Quran. Uh, as, uh, as Allah says, وَمَن يُشَاقِكِ الرَّسُولَ uh, so whoever goes against the, the Prophet وسلم, which was, of course this encompasses the Sunnah uh, and after the, the guidance has been um, cleared to, made clear to them and they follow something other than the, the way of the, the believers and mu'minin here and so like whoever goes against the believers in this and then we we leave them whatever with whatever they want, uh, and like we we let them follow their desires. And this uh, when nuslihim jahanna or when nuslihim jahanna that we make them taste uh, the the hellfire, uh, and uh, and so this is something that this this extreme like um, punishment comes for the people that go against the way of the believers. And so, of course, like following the way of the believers, what the believers, which is, of course, the, the first believers that enter into this ayah of the, are the ones that were there at that time, which are the Sahaba, and also the ones who follow their way, and the ones that follow their way, and with their understanding. So, of course, the, anything that has been um, agreed upon, and that is the way of the believers, and it's not permissible for anyone coming after them to, to go against them. And, of course, this um, ijma can happen at any time. Like, this can happen in any, any um, um, time. So if we have a, an issue that comes up, such as um, for our, uh, like modern-day issue or of something that's um, pretty much an ijma, is that like zakah. Uh, zakah is something that when we have our money, say if I have um, dollars, then zakah is wajib, or it's obligatory on me with my with the the dollars that I have, even though it's not gold or silver, which is the uh, which is what is originally been ijma on whoever has so much gold or silver, or and a year has passed on it, then there's zakah on it. But the same thing goes for dollars, and this is something that there's there's no difference of opinion in. And so if somebody goes against this matter, then this is something that they're going against ijma, uh, and this that is something that is new, and. Um, and this is something that we use as a basis for Aqidah, and um, such as that Allah is high and above His throne, uh, and and that uh, and that He is uh, separated from His creation. So He's not inside of His creation, but He's high and above His throne, uh, separated from His creation. So like even the sky itself is below Him, um, because this is a part of His creation. And so and this is something that the the Salaf of the uh, the Salaf of the Ummah, which are like the righteous predecessors, they agreed upon and they had ijma upon this. And there's no difference of opinion um, from from them in this. And so anyone who comes afterwards, they have to agree with what they agreed upon, or else they're they're subject to that punishment. And also this is something that's a like a, a serious issue for someone to go against anything that is ijma. Um, some of the scholars have talked about that the person who denies that something that is um, that has ijma on it. Uh, then this is an act of disbelief, and this can take someone outside of Islam. Of course, they need to know that this is a this is something that there's ijma upon. But if somebody says, for instance, like you know that zina is not haram, or that like um, khamar is 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 permissible, or um, certain things like this, which are known, we all know that this is um, impermissible, and we also there's ijma on this issue. Then this is something that would take someone outside of. Um, out of Islam, of course, this is something we'll talk about in the later chapters. Like, what are the uh, what are the things to take into consideration uh, when it comes to um, 
when it comes to belief and what takes someone outside of Islam and what are the um, different time, one of the different times that somebody may, you know, can have a valid ex excuse. But so ijma is a very uh, is a very key is a very key issue, and it's something that also that brings it brings like a um, there's no like it brings a certain aspect to the religion that there's never going to be a change um, that happens, and it keeps it as its original religion. As we look at all the other religions that are out there, from like whether it's Christianity or Judaism or any of the other religions that are from like the other ones, you'll see that they've changed over time, and they've always changed over time. And the the reason they've changed over time is is because they've been distorted. And with Islam, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, when something has a consensus on it, this can never change. Like this is something that is, is, uh, that is there and it's the ruling. And anyone who goes against it, they're going away from Islam. You know, and so Islam is very, very strong in holding to what it was originally upon. Um, and Allah, of course, uh, has uh, promised to protect his religion and to protect uh, the, the Quran and the Sunnah from, from these things. And so... Uh, and then also the the next one of the the four uh, ways that we take our uh, our information about the religion is the clear reason. And this is something, of course, clear reason. Allah has programmed every single individual and given them a program of like a mind. You know that we all have a mind that works, and we know that two plus two equals four. And if this doesn't, and we know that like you can't have two opposites at the in the same thing at the same place at the same time. And um, like this is something that you will never have these um, like these things that uh, occur. So um, so things that are like clear reason. And there's certain like base, uh, if you could call it like software that is within every single person. And if this uh, if this software wasn't there, this person would be like insane, you know. And so Allah has given us this um, and this reasoning. And this reasoning is something that will never, of course, it will never go against the Quran and the Sunnah. If the, if the Quran and the Sunnah is clear, uh, or if the, and the Quran and the Sunnah is authentic, of course the Quran is authentic, but some of the Sunnah, or a lot of it, is something that is um, subject to uh, debate and its authenticity um, because of whether there's weak narrators in some of it. Of course, uh, this is the whole subject in and of itself. But if we ever come up with like something that, uh, that seems to be uh, like it seems to go against each other, then this is something that either a, there's something wrong with it. We'll talk about it at the, at the end. There's either something uh, wrong with like the authenticity of like what we're looking at, or there's something wrong with our mind. You know, our mind it's not um, clearly reasoning in this thing, or it's a there's a problem with the understanding. And so um, the the clear reason will never go against the Quran and the Sunnah. Though this is a, a general principle. And also, the clear reasoning is something that we use and as a way of receiving information. So, if we know that this thing is contradictory, uh, and whatever the the belief is, we know that there's something wrong with this belief, and we have to bring it back to Allah and His Messenger in that, and, and see what there uh, and see what there is um, to say about that. And also, the next one is the upright fitra, which is the natural disposition. This is the way that Allah has um, created every single human being in a natural state of tawfid that we worship Allah alone and that we don't associate any partners uh, alongside of Allah. And this is something that Allah has uh, created us with this, just um, ingrained naturally in us. And there's also things um, of, of aqidah that are ingrained within, the, within every single individual from like a natural level. And of course, this is, uh, this is used as evidence um, in, the, in the way of how we receive our information, such as that Allah is, a, is high and above his... Uh, high and above his creation. This is something that when people pray, they put their hands up to the sky and they look up to. Uh, they look up when they're when they're asking Allah for something. And this is something that is a natural disposition within um, 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 mankind in general. And of course, if somebody has um, destroyed their natural disposition, then we don't take that into consideration. But in general, there are things that uh, people have agreed upon and. Um, and like wherever they are, if they're in a natural state, then this is the, the natural response. And, um, and so this, is, this, this natural disposition is something that we take the information or like re receive the deen from. Um, and so the next, um, the next thing that, we, that the author here mentioned was, and we talked about this a little bit uh, last week. 
so I won't go over it and and uh, and in huge detail I'll just explain it here but they believe that the most decisive evidence and highest reference or uh, like go thing to go back to is the book of Allah which is the Quran and uh, and the authentic prophetic Sunnah even if it's Ahad and so and also um, we have this and like the meaning of Ahad is something that hasn't reached the level of mass transmission or mutawatir. Uh, and so the, the authentic uh, um, prophetic sunnah is something that we go back to and we look at this and if Allah said it or his messenger said it, then there's no room for anyone after that to, to have a say in opposition to it. Like there's no, it's a done deal. You know, and this is something that we see that the, the book of Allah is the thing that is the most powerful evidence. Um, and uh, uh, this is a, this is the evidence and an argument that is that is just um, that is like to the the strongest way of um, bringing evidence is with the Quran and with the Sunnah and this is the the highest level of evidence and this is something that some of the the people who got involved with philosophy they would say that the the Quran and the Sunnah is not the highest um, sense of uh, or type of evidence because you could interpret it this way or this way but this is something that when they say you could interpret it this way or this way so since it has the ability to be interpreted then it's not uh, that but then they come up with their philosophical arguments that um, nobody can understand except uh, a few people and even and them they have a disagreement within themselves and so in these issues and then they say this is the most uh, this is the most decisive argument or like the burahim and they come up with this and this is something that because they they went away from the book of Allah and they went away from the the sunnah of what the Prophet ﷺ said and they put uh, that on a lower level from their own uh, uh, philosophical reasonings or uh, philosoph uh, philosophies and like um, like concepts that they would come up with so because of this they they didn't make this as their highest um, reference of like the book of Allah and his messenger and of course this is something that uh, is is misguidance and that anyone who comes with that um, they're coming with misguidance because much like the the majority of the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah is something that it comes to us in the Quran and the Sunnah and it also comes after that if you if you say okay maybe I could interpret it this way or this way but the the Ummah has given ijma' or consensus that this is the way that it's correctly interpreted and anyone who goes after that um, and tries to say something about that this um, thing could be interpreted a different way there's already consensus on the first way of an interpretation so there's no room for that and so this is a um, this is kind of like a, a checkmate for anyone who wants to try to um, play with the deen or to change anything or um, make a difference in that because the consensus upon the Quran the Sunnah um, keeps it from being understood in any diff in any way other than that and so, um, and then the last, uh, the next thing that he talks about, which is where we, uh, and also to talk about the Ahad. Uh, the Ahad is, I mentioned it in the last class, but just a quick overview, is that Ahad, you'll have some hadith that come from maybe a, a couple of narrators, such as like the, one of the most famous hadiths, the Innam al-A'malu bin Niyat. So this, uh, that all deeds are only according to their actions. I, I, all deans are only according to their intentions. This is a hadith that came, and of course, uh, Sahih Muslim and also um, Bukhari, they brought this hadith. But this is a hadith that the authentic um, the chain that comes, it comes from one person to one person to one person to one person, and then uh, it comes from like one, 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 and then later after this, then it became a popular hadith where everyone started narrating this hadith. And yes, it was narrated before by weak narrators, but this was something that really wasn't taken into consideration because they were so weak. But it only came to us in one authentic um, narration from like one person to one person to one person. And then after that, it, uh, it became much, uh, like much more widespread and accepted. But because this is one to one to one, this is something that would be considered ahad, as opposed to a hadith such as... Um, uh, the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever lies against me, then let him take his uh, place in the hellfire. This is a hadith that uh, like over uh, over 70 of the Sahaba, they narrate this hadith. This is one of the most like popular hadith. And then of the 70 people that narrate this hadith from the Sahaba, all of these people had like m multitudes of people that narrated on these people. And so there's no, there's no like question that this is something that... Uh, 
it was said by the Prophet Sallallahu and that we don't even need to look at the reliability of the actual narrators because it's said from so many people that there's no question about whether this person was authentic or not or, and whatnot. So we don't even look at that. We just say it came from us from so many different places that it's undeniable uh, evidence. And so this is, that's of course, that's a stronger way. And this is like the Quran. It comes in this undeniable um, uh, transmission to us. It doesn't just come from one person, one person, one person. Um, but this is something that is um, with a with a huge um, chain when it comes to the the amount of people that were uh, that were narrating it, uh, and reciting, of course, the Quran. And this this type of Sunnah is something that um, is there. And yes, it's not the mo majority of the Sunnah. The majority of the Sunnah it didn't reach this huge level of like mass transmission. But it's still in evidence because. Uh, um, because if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told, he told the people to, to, take the, um, to take what he said, then if one person heard it, uh, then he needs to tell the other person that heard it. And if he told the other person that heard it from the beginning, then this person is only one to one. And of course, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also sent individuals to, to tribes and, and nations to send what he told them. And so like the individual that went there was just one person. Uh, and so, and these people were bound by what this one person had to tell them and, and give them the deen. So like that, um, the people that come afterwards, if it reached them from a trustworthy individual and this person um, has, uh, like the narration has been checked from many, many different angles and been authenticated. So this is something that uh, after it's been authenticated, it's something that we go back to and we use and it's uh, evidence in the deen. And that comes with Akita as well as um, that comes in Akita as well as with uh, issues of Akita or, or Ahkam, which is um, like the the Fiki rulings. And both of these are things that we there's no difference between Akita and um, and Fik when it comes to where do we take uh, do we take the Sunnah or is it doesn't need to be Ahad or uh, Mutawat or and all of these they're both and uh, whether it's Akita or whether it's Sunnah we both take these as evidences. And of course, with the condition that it is um, authentic. And, and the next thing that the author here he says is, وَلَا يُقَدِّمُونَ عَلَى كَلَامِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَكَلَامِ رَسُولِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَلَامَ أَحَدًا كَائِنًا مَنْ كَانْ And so he says here that uh, they don't put anyone's word, whoever they may be, above what Allah or, or His Messenger said, صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ So this is something that, uh, that is very important that we never put anyone else's when it comes to, uh, and I touched on this point, but when it comes to um, the what Allah said or what His Messenger said, we don't put anyone's opinion uh, above this. This is a this is the end of the the day. We go back to Allah and His Messenger. When uh, اختلفتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله ورسوله. And that so if you had any difference of opinion, go back to Allah and His Messenger. And so this is what we we always go back to that, and this is something we we don't put anything in front of that and. And Allah says, "La tuqaddimu bayni yadiyallahi wa rasooli." And so that also Allah says, "Don't, don't come in front, or don't try to put yourselves in front of, or, or put anything else in front of Allah and His messenger." Uh, and this is at the beginning of Surah Tahajjud. And so this is very, very key, and it's a very key principle that we don't put, uh, we don't put like the philosophy, and then um, put this at odds with the with the Quran or the Sunnah or something of this sense. When it comes to the Prophet Sallallahu he said it, then this is the end of it. We we take it and we uh, we take it, and then this is uh, we'll talk about this uh, in a little more detail here. And so the next thing that he says here is, "We are talking about Sunnah uh, Hujjatan bi Nafsiha." And so he says here that they believe that the sunnah is an evidence in and of itself in issues of aqidah and fiqh. So this is something that we look, when we take the sunnah, we know that the sunnah is an evidence in and of itself. Like this is the primary evidence. This is something that we don't, we, uh, we don't need to uh, like question that the Prophet sent him, he was sent and uh, and he was sent to be obeyed. And this is something that if the Prophet sent him, he said something or did something or where it's relayed to us uh, on something from his sunnah, then this is something that we take it regardless of whether it's something in belief or whether it's um, something in um, ahkam. And some of the people, they tried to make a difference in this to, to bring in their philosophy. They would say, when it comes to ahkam, yes, we, we take the sunnah. But when it comes to belief, we don't take it. Or they say we take it, but in reality, the, they don't use it. Um, this is like the Ash'aris, um, they, they went in this way and they'll say, yes, we take the, or the, yeah, the Sunnah is evidence and they say it, 
But if you open up any of their books and say, where is the Sunnah in this book? The only thing that you'll find is they are, they're going against the, they take the, they said, if this comes in a hadith, this is how we interpret it, reinterpret it according to our belief. And if this, and it's always like a, uh, like a rebuttal against what the hadith uh, has to say. And so then in reality, they don't take this as their, um, they don't take this as evidence in and of itself. But rather they say this is something that um, that is subject to debate and so because of that we don't take it as evidence. And um, and of course the Sunnah is something that Allah has promised to preserve. Um, that uh, and, and that is encompassed in the dhikr and that, uh, and that Allah has, um, that Allah has um, promised to uh, uh, to preserve the, the dhikr which is the Sunnah and it's also the, the Quran. And this is something Allah will pr protect his deen and will pr protect his religion. And this is a part of the religion. It's a very key part of it. So we know that it's something that we go back to in, in issues of Aqidah. And of course, like the the the, the Sahaba and the the, the Tabi'in, the ones who followed them, and the ones that followed them, these first generations, they, they had ijma' on the issue that we go back to the Sunnah, whether it's uh, Mutawat or whether it's Ahad. This is something they, they use this as an evidence, and they had, uh, and regardless of what the other person had to say before the Sunnah came to them, when the Sunnah came in a certain matter, it was always Samatna wa Ta'na, that we hear and we obey. Uh, and this is something that is a, that is a very key concept um, that has ijma' upon that, um, that, which is that consensus. And then the next thing he talk, that um, he says here is, وَيَتَلَقَّوْنَ نُسُوسَ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ بِتَعْظِيمِ وَالْإِسْتِسْلَامِ and so he says, and that they take, they accept the text of the Quran, like when they take it and receive the text of the um, Quran and Sunnah, they receive it with great reverence and submission. And so this is something that uh, you, you'll see that this is a this is a key thing when we hear the Quran and when we hear the Sunnah, we don't we should never be in the argumentative state, you know, like or uh, in this way, but rather we look at the Quran, and the Sunnah, and we see that uh, we take it with uh, with uh, showing respect and with reverence to to the Quran and the Sunnah and we don't want to put our own thoughts above it ever and of course if somebody is trying to like they're trying to ponder the meaning of the Quran they should go with an open heart when they're coming to the Quran they should go with an open heart uh, which means like that they're trying to learn what Allah is teaching them as opposed to trying to find what they want to find in the Quran and of someone who's trying to find what they want to find in the Quran they won't get what the Quran is trying to teach them because the Quran when um, somebody reads it and they ponder its meanings it's something that will fix the uh, it will fix the the beliefs of a of, of an individual of course um, like someone uh, like me coming into Islam from outside when I would read the Quran there would be things that I had previously thought that were totally they're totally nonsense and the Quran when I took it it would fix these beliefs and little by little I'd see that my worldview was being totally changed by the Quran and that this was something that brought me um, brought me into a clear uh, into like a clear um, state of like viewing the world around me as all of us we have certain uh, world uh, world views and paradigms that uh, we come to but when we take the Quran and we submit ourselves to it and we make it the biggest thing um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to our life and we take it with this um, respect and reverence then this is something and of course with submission to whatever Allah says then we we take it and we believe it and if the Prophet ﷺ said it we take it and we believe it this is something that is um, that is key for someone's success and and when we look at this um, uh, and when we look at this this is something that we uh, we see that the the Abu Bakr, which is like the best of the Ummah after and the Prophet Sallallahu Abu Bakr, when he uh, was told by the Quraysh, the the people all that disbelieved, they wanted to they wanted to like um, throw him uh, throw him for a trip, and they said, "Oh, did you did you know that your uh, that your Prophet he says that he went on the um, that he went to in the night." that he went to um, Beit al maqdis like he went to Jerusalem, and then was taken up to, um, in a single night, and was taken up into the heavens and whatnot. Uh, and they were they were trying to say, oh, do you really believe him in this? And, uh, and Abu Bakr, he gave the, the, best, uh, the best response. He said, if the Prophet said it, uh, then I believe it. Like this is something, um, he, he comes with much greater than this, you know, when it comes to like the Quran, the revelation from Allah. And so if he said it, I believe it. And this is the, this is the telltale sign of his iman, is that um, he believes whatever the Prophet said. 
And, uh, and this is something that should be in every single heart of every Muslim, is that we should always, if the Prophet ﷺ said it, then it's a done deal. You know, this is, this is the end of the matter. Uh, and we take it and we receive it. Um, and so the next thing that um, the author here, he says, وَيَعْتَقِدُونَ اِجْتِمَالَهَا عَلَى جَمِيعِ مَسَائِلِ الدِّينِ وَلَا سِيَمَا الْإِيمَانِ and so he says, and that they believe, uh, and that they accept, uh, that they believe that it covers all the issues of the religion, like the the Quran, the Sunnah, that it covers all the issues of the religion, especially iman, uh, which is like belief and aqidah. And so th when we see this, uh, when we see the Quran, and the Sunnah, this is something that we don't think that it left out anything that we need to know when it comes to our belief in Allah and His Messenger and what we need to know about the last day and what we need to know about uh, what is required from us. We don't think that the, uh, that there's anything missing from this. And that when Allah said, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وَاتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَةِ وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا When Allah said that this day I've perfected and, and completed your, your, your religion for you and uh, and that uh, that he is pleased with Islam as our religion, then this is something from this day. We know that all of that we, uh, like this uh, religion has been completed and there's nothing that's left out. So we don't need any type of bid'ah because anything, of course, if you have a full cup of something that is filled to the brim with goodness and complete, then anything else that you throw into that cup is only going to be uh, pushing out what it was, what was the, the perfect, the perfect nature of Islam and that we have. And so, and this is a this is a question that um, can be posed to every every like a single person that tries to put in um, philosophy or they use the al kalam is if somebody held to the Quran and the Sunnah, if they held to the Quran and the Sunnah with all if with all that they have and they take their deen from the Quran and the Sunnah without anything else, you know they they hold to uh, what Allah said in His Quran and what the the authentic Sunnah is. If they take this. Is this enough for them to be uh, saved from the hellfire and them to be successful on the day of judgment? Is this enough? You know, and if they were to take what's in the Quran and the Sunnah by itself, you know, and they don't go to any type of philosophy or any of these uh, other things, is this enough for their salvation? And this is this is a like this is pretty simple when it comes to this. But some of the people um, have gone against. Have gone against, and they say no. The Quran and the Sunnah is not enough for somebody. Somebody needs to learn philosophy, and they need to learn some, some types of, um, of like this philosophical reason in our jargon of how we prove the existence of God with this, uh, with this, that, and the other, and anything goes against this. And this is something that uh, there's a type of disbelief, and they come up with this. And this is something that uh, is away from the Quran. It doesn't have a basis in the Quran, and it's something that is outside of it. And and of course, when we look at a Muslim, a Muslim is someone who submits to Allah and His Messenger. And this is something we go back to the Quran, and um, and we we know that the Quran and the Sunnah it covers every single thing that we need to know. And whether it's in a specific sense, whether it's in like something that is like uh, that is talked about in a specific sense, or if it's talked about in a general sense, that um, the, whatever we're trying to look for it comes in like a small uh, like a small branch off of this general thing that Allah has commanded. And usually every single like every single ruling that can be found in fiqh or in any one in any time or place, it, it usually will fall it will fall under something in the Quran. And it'll be something that is either um, that is either talked about in like uh, spe specificity, or, or it's something that is usually talked about in a general manner that has guidance in a general uh, manner. And like the Prophet Sallallahu he says, "La darara wa la durar," that is that there's no causing of harm, and there and there's no like going back and forth with uh, with harming. And so um, this is something that the Prophet Sallallahu he says like this this one sentence here, and that there uh, of this, but the the amount of fit. And things that come under it, and some of the some of the um, like the scholars of uh, fiqh and whatnot, they've said that all of the ahkam it goes back to this this principle uh, that there's no harm or re reciprocating of harm, like which is like uh, putting aside the harm and um, bringing together what is what is good. Uh, and so, of course, like this is something that's also um, that's also commanded in the Quran, of course, uh, in, in a general way of yet mumruna bil ma'rufi wa anil munkar. And like certain certain principles that are brought up in the Quran, they encompass everything that we need to know. And of course, this is the the benefit of someone who learns the Quran and they and they study it and they uh, of course then they teach from what they're doing. 
then this is something that is the best of things because they will find every single thing they need for their life in the Quran and of course reading the Sunnah they will find it in the Sunnah as well and the Quran and the Sunnah if this is all that someone held on to was the Quran and the Sunnah and they took the Quran and the Sunnah and uh, of course with the and uh, not going against the understanding of the of the Salaf in this then this is something that they would uh, they would, would without a doubt that would be enough for them and, and for their salvation on the day of judgment uh, uh, what they they said I I heard in the Samaritan and Munadia Yunadi lil imani an aminu bi rabbikum fa amanna that I've heard I've heard the the caller to um, to uh, to believe in Allah and so uh, we've we've said that we believe and this is something of course this is that this is the path of uh, of success and what it has been agreed upon by uh, by the Ummah in all of these generations. And so that we we yakhuduna, the next thing he says is we yakhuduna ha ma'khadat ta'wili alayha wa la'atimad. And he says, and they take it in a way of reliance and basis. And this is uh, this is very key that of course we use the Quran, we take the Quran and the Sunnah, uh, and we take the Sunnah uh, which he's talking about here, we take it in a way of, of reliance. We take we don't take it as something that is uh, that we can take it or leave it, but rather we rely upon it and we take this and this is why we're called Ahlas Sunnah. Um, that we are the people of the Sunnah and that we're, we hold on to the Sunnah. What, what is the Sunnah? The Sunnah is like the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and his way and the path that he took. And so we take this and we uh, and we, we use it as a basis and we rely upon it when it comes to every single issue of our of our life uh, and in the in the deen. <clears throat> And the next thing the author says is, And here he starts to bring um, some of the, the, the quiet or the principles that we, we use when it comes to um, the Sunnah. And this is very, very important. And he says that they um, bring together all of the texts in every issue. Uh, and that they, they're, they look at every single, uh, uh, they look at all of the texts they bring it together, all of the texts in every single issue. So if we have an issue such as, um, uh, whether it's in a fiqh issue or whether it's in a belief issue, but if we have uh, uh, any issue that comes up, we don't take some of the text and then leave the rest. But rather we take all of the texts, all of the texts that are authentic, we put it together and we look at it to get the whole picture. To get the whole picture and then because uh, when we take this as a cohesive picture then we come up with the right uh, with the right understanding and the people of Bidar they've taken some of the text and then they leave the rest of the text uh, such as the Khawarij they take some of the the texts that talk about um, the the punishment the severe punishment of people that do certain uh, uh, like wrong actions and so they see these certain punishments that are that are given to these people and these people are are, are warned with the hellfire from this that and the other so they say that somebody who uh, uh, does something that isn't kufr, but it's something that's uh, that's like a, they do a big uh, they do a big sin like of the kabair. Then this person um, stays in the hellfire and they never come out and they're a disbeliever. And so they 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 make take fear of this person because they do something that is wrong, um, that isn't actually kufr. It's not something that takes them outside of Islam, but rather because it has a a, a big um, like it has a big warning against it then they say this person is a, a disbeliever. And so they took some of the texts that are that are like that are of Tarheeb, which is like I'm making somebody I'm scared of falling into these things. Uh, and then they, they took they left the other text where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi also talked about anyone who says uh, anyone who says La ilaha illallah uh, with while believing it firmly from his heart and that gives the shahada from believing it from his heart and he enters Jannah and so like they, they leave this text they also leave the other texts that come in the Sunnah about the people that will be taken um, <coughs> the people that will be taken out of the hellfire. Um, af, um, well, that haven't done any good deeds, and of course they're they're Muslims, but they haven't done any like they lam uh, yatman khairan qat, and that they uh, that they haven't done anything good uh, at all, and so this is something that uh, as long as someone's a, a believer, then yes they will they will enter in jannah, and in, but if somebody disbelieves, then they will go in, they will they will enter into the hellfire. If somebody is a bad believer, you know, and they do. Uh, they do certain big sins, then they're subject to punishment for that. And uh, and Allah, if He wants, He can forgive them. And if He wants, He can punishment, and that's their that's His right, and they deserve it. 
and Allah will never uh, will never uh, oppress anybody, and they will be only uh, punished according to what they uh, what they've earned. And so, and this is something where the the Khawarij, they didn't put the different um, texts in this issue together, but they took some of the text and then they threw it against the other text and and disregarded the other text. And this is uh, this is a key thing with Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jamaah is that we take all of the texts in any s single issue and we look at it together and we make sure that we uh, take it all into consideration and we use it when interpret and when interpreting um, texts. So we take all the texts of something uh, like say in this issue of the Wa'd Wa'd Wa'id is like the 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 promising uh, the promise and the the promise for the believers and the the punishments or like the 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 threats. Um, for those who um, do uh, do evil actions, and so we put these both together, and then we come up with the. Um, of course, it's it's been done for us from the the righteous predecessors, but we take all of these together and we put them, and we don't throw one side at another side. And this is what sometimes will happen, where somebody they will take all of the texts on a certain issue that point to what they want, and then they'll disregard the texts that don't agree with their position. And this is this is a key fallacy of um, people that want to follow their own um, their own desires and they go away from the path of the believers and the, in this issue but this is rather something we put bring it all together and then when we look at this then we can understand it and sometimes when we put these texts together we'll find that some of them happened at some time and then at a later time there was an abrogation of this uh, of this ruling so we have to look at it all in one um, cohesive picture and if we only took some of it we could fall into mistakes um, and this is uh, and this is something that is of the the beauty of some of the texts, such as like uh, Sahih Muslim, and a lot of the the compilers of Hadith. They would bring all. They would bring the like some of the best things that they would do. They'd bring all the Hadith that have to do with a certain subject, and they would put it together in one place. And if there's certain different like uh, in Muslim, uh, Imam Muslim, he put the together in his uh, his book Sahih Muslim. He would put all the Hadiths in a certain thing in a certain order. So where you would see that these are all the Hadiths that come in this thing, and they will explain each other. Uh, and then also he has um, certain ways of like um, pointing like if the Hadith is mansukh, which means like it's abrogated, then he would put this first and then he would put the hadith that abrogates it or gives it, um, like it's a general hadith, he would put that first and then the more specific hadith afterwards that makes it more specific, that hadith, he'll bring it afterwards and he puts it all together in, a, in one place. And of course this is one of the benefits of um, of like Sahih Muslim is that he brings all the hadith together in, in one place and many of the other um, um, compilers of hadith afterwards they do this similar thing where there will they'll be a subject and they bring all the hadith that are in this um, thing and they'll put it together in this um, this area so that you can have a, a clear picture of what this is and instead of just taking one hadith here and one hadith um, here and then leaving all the other hadiths uh, and so, of course, like context is key when it comes to hadiths, and it's not just the the concept of when something has been said, but also all the other hadiths that have been said in this issue, as well as the the Quran, all of the other ayat that have to do with this issue. Uh, and so, this is a this is a very very key concept and a principle that and the Sunnah and Jamaat um, they take into consideration when it comes to any subject. Uh, and then the next thing that the author here he says, so yafhamunaha. Uh, and so he says here that this is um, that they understand it with the understanding of the Prophet like they understand the, the Sunnah with the understanding of the Prophet uh, and uh, his trusted companions and trust uh, and tr trustworthy the trustworthy Imams and so this is something that is, this is the key in the core of what, uh, like if you ever hear the word Salafiya, what does it truly mean in its, um, and its, its meaning is that they go back to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam understood the, um, under, like understood the Qur'an as. And of course what his companions understood the Qur'an and what he said uh, with their understanding. And then we also, after that, we go back to the, the Imams. That were um, that were of the forerunners. How did they understand um, these texts? And this is we go back to them with our understanding, and we understand it as they understood it. And so we don't try to come up with um, new understandings that go against that. And of course, there can be new um, things that if someone ponders the Quran, they will come up with something that no one else ever came up with. 
you know, and someone, especially this is the benefit of le learning Arabic and learning like the Laga and whatnot, they will come up with benefits that um, maybe aren't talked about from the Salaf or that people never um, like looked at before. There can be benefits that people can pick up. And this is something for every individual that can be very unique. Um, but when it comes to these benefits uh, or understandings, it should never be something that goes against what how they understood it. Uh, uh, how the Prophet, of course, understood it, or the, the uh, as they understood the Sunnah, or um, the Sahaba understood the Sunnah, or the ways that these were interpreted from them. They understand it as they understand it, and any of these extra things that come, there's something that uh, that is something extra, but it should never go against the way that uh, it was understood originally. And this is something that is very key for someone to understand. Yes, people can understand things in a new way, but this new way should never be something that takes away from what is established um, from the from the beginning. And this is the meaning of Salafiyah. If someone uh, they want to know, like, because um, Salafiyah has a has a like, it sometimes gets like a meaning of this is something that is like um, to shut the door. Like people, they they go hardcore about certain things. And really, the the Salafi is going back to the Sahaba. Everyone believes that the Sahaba were uh, like all the Sunnah and Jamaat. We all believe that the Sahaba were upon the truth. And then, if we believe the people that were their students that followed them in that way or upon the truth, then this is uh, then the people that came after them and that followed them in that way. Then they're upon the truth, and this is the the meaning of Salafi is that we follow these original people, and we don't bring anything new into the religion that wasn't there at that time. If it wasn't good enough for them, then it's not, uh, or if it was something that was um, that they didn't see as good, then it's something we don't we don't see that this is something that is um, good as well. But rather, we base our understanding off of the understanding that they had originally, and this is this is key uh, when it comes to understanding the Quran and the Sunnah and the, and the text. Uh, and understanding the religion as a whole, um, and that we never go against them in this way. And then the red, and the next thing that he says here, uh, which is about the interpretation, is he says, "Wajufasiruna al kitab wa wa sunnat bihima, thumma bi akwal al sahaba min wa man saru ala manahij min hajihim, fa in lam yatayasar fa bima sah min lugat al arab wa lahajatihim." And so he says here that they interpret the Quran and the Sunnah with each other. Like the Quran interprets the Sunnah and the Sunnah interprets the Quran. And there's many examples of this uh, that you can find when studying the Quran. You'll see that some things in the Quran are general and the Sunnah will come in a way that makes it uh, more specific. Um, such as like with, if we have wudu, like how are we making wudu? Um, that we have um, things in the, in the Quran like um, this is something that is general if you've ever stood up to go to pray uh, then you need to wash your face and your hands and uh, these things but in the sunnah we have that it's uh, that while this is something for someone who wants to pray if somebody is already um, they stayed in their state of wudu and they haven't broken their state of um, tahara then they don't have to make wudu again and this is something that if you were to take the Quran only then you would have to make wudu every single time and then uh, but if you take the uh, but if you take the Sunnah as well, it explains that this is for the people who uh, they went up to they want to pray and they aren't in a state of wudu. Then they need to wash their face and their hands and whatnot. And so these go and the, the examples of this are, are countless. There's no there's no way to um, put a, a number onto the examples of where the Sunnah interprets the Quran as well as the um, the Quran sometimes will interpret the Sunnah. The, um, such as the, the hadith that the Prophet said, uh, And so, like, uh, in this hadith, the Prophet says, I've been uh, commanded to fight the people, الناس, which is like the people. And this is something that, in, um, the, it's a general sense, like to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illallah. But in the Quran, we have, And so, like, in that, the the Allah tells them in the Quran to fight the people of the disbelievers, the people of the book and whatnot that don't believe in Allah and His Messenger until they give the jizya. And so if they give the jizya, then you don't have to, um, then they're, they're left alone, they're not fought. And so this is something that, um, and there's other examples as well in the Quran that will tell, the, uh, tell, these, uh, tell these things, which will explain the things that may be general in the Sunnah as well as it's given an example in the, in, in the Quran of an exception of that. And so we put all of these together. Of course, we put them when we put them together, then we interpret them with each other. Um, 
And so, and this is something that is very, very key that we go and we interpret the Quran as well with the Quran. So you'll have one place in the Quran and we interpret it with another place in the Quran. And this is a, uh, this is a type of tafsir, which is a tafsir, uh, tafsir al Quran ibn al Quran. And so this is a type of tafsir that uh, Imam Ashokani, he went through with his um, book, Abdul Bayan, and he focused on this method of tafsir which is interpreting the Qur'an with, his, uh, with, the, with the Qur'an itself, and which is, of course, of the best um, types of tafsir, and, um, and also the sunnah. And like the sunnah in general is something that is, uh, that is more, ex like there's much more text. If you look at the sunnah, the amount of words and text that's in the sunnah, and you look at the Qur'an, of course, the sunnah, there's a bigger book. Like, uh, it's like multiple, uh, you'll have like multiple um, volumes to the book. But if you were to go to um, the Qur'an, then of course this is like something that we memorize you know like this is something that's doable to to memorize for uh, a person who puts their mind to it and so um uh the difference in like the the content of words is yes there's a there's a big difference and also in the the types of explanation and whatnot there'll be much more there'll be a lot more things that are explained in the sunnah that will explain the quran than the opposite than the quran explaining the sunnah and sometimes this will happen but the majority of it is that the, the Sunnah explains and gives um, specificity to the, the Qur'an when it, in its generality. And also then, if these two things, if we need to uh, interpret something, then we look, after we look to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, which are like the highest ways to interpret uh, with each other, uh, then we will look to the sayings of the companions. Because sometimes in the Qur'an, there'll be something that... Um, we won't find necessarily something that's clear in the in the Sunnah or the uh, or the other parts of the Quran to to give us the the meaning of this. So we look to what did the what did the companions of the Prophet, so I said them, the ones who were there when the revelation happened, the ones that know the the time that this was revealed. What did they have to say about this issue? Uh, and so when they they will talk about certain things that if you look at the Quran by itself and you didn't get what their uh, what their insight like the companions who were there when the Quran was being revealed if you don't get their insight then you're going to be making a lot of mistakes and like one example of this is um, that in the Quran Allah talks about there's no problem if you make uh, if you make uh, uh, if you go back and forth like making the the sa'i between um, Safa and Marwa in Safa wal Marwa min sha'irillah. فمن حج البيت واعتمر فلا جناح عليهما فلا جناح عليه أن يتطوف بهما. So that there's no problem like that. Safa and Marwa are from the ayat of Allah. Um, they're from the, the signs of Allah and that there's no problem for someone who uh, who makes um, Hajj or Umrah if he makes them there's no problem with him to go between them and so like and so like to go between them uh, so there's no problem for him to do this but this is something that like the scholars will say this is obligatory but Allah says here there's no problem why do you say there's no problem this is something that shows that there's no there's nothing wrong with doing it and saying something that there's nothing wrong with something, like it gives the impression that this is something that's not obligatory. Because if there's nothing wrong with it, maybe I can leave it. You know, but Aisha, she narrates in a, uh, when someone asked her about this and was thinking that they could leave off the, the Sa'i between uh, Safa and Marwa, which is um, walking between these two hills. Um, and, and of course, right um, beside the Kaaba. And so walking between these, which is a right of, uh, which is like some of the rights of Hajj and Umrah. And so, and someone thought that they could leave it because of the the meaning of this in Arabic without looking back at what they had to say. And so um, she said that this was something at the time that there used to be idols on this side and this side. And the people would make, uh, they would go back and forth and make the sa'i, which is like walking from one to the other and going back and forth. And so when the, when, when the, the people were commanded to do this, then some of them felt a hardship in themselves because they thought this was something that was connected to the idolatry of the Quraysh. And so this ayah was revealed in response to their belief that there was something connected from the, uh, um, to the idolatry of the Quraysh because, the Quraysh because there used to be idols on both of these things. And so going between them, it used to be something they would do with and uh, in a, in a sense of idol worship. But Allah affirms in this in uh, in the Safat wal Marwata min sha'irillah that these are from the the things that Allah has um, made um, for Himself, and they're from Allah. Uh, Allah's um, um, like uh, He has prescribed these things, and they're from the things that are um, with Allah, like the alamat or like the ayat of Allah. 
and that he has, um, and that whoever goes between them, there's no problem with going between this one and that one. And with this context, when you see the context of what this ayah was revealed in, of someone who would find a hardship thinking that this was still connected with idolatry, and when Allah says there's no problem going between this and that one, it shows that this was in response to the beliefs of some of the believers at that time that these were connected with idolatry, but Allah says, no, this is not connected with idolatry. Rather, this is something that is prescribed for you. And so, of course, going back to the sayings of the companions is uh, absolutely imperative when it comes to interpreting the Qur'an with tafsir and uh, interpreting also the sunnah as well. Like, understanding when this was revealed, there was a certain state of being. And like the people, if you hear a conversation, like cut from its context, you can get a certain understanding. But if you know what was happening when this person was talking to the other person, then this means something totally different. You know, and you understand who he's talking to, why he's talking to him in this way, and why why is the Quran talking uh, in this manner? Because if you know why, when it was revealed, who it was revealed to, and the state of affairs at that time, uh, then it's understood in a much greater uh, fashion. And of course, the companions are the ones who were there when the Quran was being revealed, so they understood who it was talking to and who it was revealed to. And some of the um, some of the Sahabis that were that were like their well, there were the scholars of tafsir, they would say, I know where every single ayah was revealed, when it was revealed, and uh, and they have the interpretation for this. And some of their students would, would sit with them and go over the Quran multiple times with them until they would go over every single ayah and ask about it, and ask about what was the, what was the state of affairs. And this is something that's very, very important for someone to go back to the companions when it comes to um, the Quran and the Sunnah and not to separate them from this because they're the ones who were there and they know what the conversation was. You know, like when you see the Quran, the Quran is a conversation. Yes, it's a conversation. But to know what the state of the, um, the companions they were in and the state of affairs and how was, uh, how was Quraysh at that time, how was Medina at that time, what was happening. And knowing the Sirah is something that gives someone context and hearing what the companions had to say about this gives them context in the correct interpretation of the Quran and the Sunnah so that somebody doesn't understand it in an incorrect way. And that's just one example uh, that I gave there about Safo and Marwa. But there's many, 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 like countless examples uh, when it comes to tafsir that um, have to go with uh, the way that we understand um, the Quran and the Sunnah according to what the companions uh, had to say about these things. And then if, if it's not those, and so we have these different levels, we interpret it, the Quran and the Sunnah with each other, with the sayings of the companions, and those who took their paths. So someone who followed, who are their students of the companions, then we look at the, what their students, how they understood these things, and how they interpreted it, and what they had to say about it. And, uh, and then if we don't see something, what we're looking for, if we, we went through all of this, uh, and we don't see what, uh, uh, what we're, like, we don't get what we need to find from this, then we go with what it, the Arabic language, uh, we go with what is correct in the Arabic language. We, go with, we look at the Arabic language and we take it from its linguistic uh, meaning and its dialects because, of course, Arabic has uh, in different dialects with different words and whatnot. So we look at all of Arabic and we look for uh, what the meaning is in Arabic and how do the Arabs understand this. And this is something you'll find in some, um, in like, lots, uh, lots that comes up in tafsir is you'll find, like, um, you'll fin uh, find, like, pieces of poetry, of Arabic poetry that will be brought up in tafsir. And maybe the Arabic poetry is, like, obscene, but, like, the, the point of it is that this is this is how this word is used in Arabic poetry, and so they'll bring the Arabic poetry as a as a way of uh, as a way of showing this is how this word is um, used, and this is the meaning of this word, and here's the context of it, and so you can understand okay, this is how this word is used, and then then this word would understand it as this uh, in the Quran, or and so this is how we can look at these things, and a lot of times there'll be words, of course, when it comes into tafsir, this is a whole subject that you um, study individually, but there's words in the Quran that will come up that hold different meanings depending on the context. So, of course, going back to the, the sayings of the companions and the, their students is key when we understand the Quran and the Sunnah. We should never, like if they have something to say about an issue, we should never be the ones that go against them. You know, like if they all agree that this is the, the general concept of what we're, uh, of what this is about in the Quran, there's some things that are maybe ambiguous or vague in the Quran and they all have something to say about this, we never step outside of what they had to say about it. So we don't come up with something new outside of that, but rather we stay within what they said. If they have differences of opinion, we stay inside of um, um, picking and choosing between the differences of opinion uh, in regards to what like the evidence points to the most. And of course, we always take the um, the Quran, and the Sunnah, as this is Arabic. Like this is um, and like learning Arabic and understanding Arabic um, properly is one of the ba biggest things 
that keeps somebody close to Allah and close to the, the Sunnah and that helps them uh, understanding um, the Quran and they don't get tricked by people. And one of the biggest things when, uh, when there's been weaknesses in the Ummah is that people have been tricked by um, people because they didn't have a good understanding of Arabic as a language. And so they were very far removed from the Quran and the Sunnah. And so someone interprets something in a wrong way in Arabic and they don't really understand that this was interpreted wrongly and then they just follow this person and what they said in their in their deceit uh, or their ignorance and so this is a, a key thing that someone should um, always know that it's very important for someone especially a student of knowledge they're, they're not a student of knowledge until they picked up Arabic and you know they've learned Arabic and they um, studied this and there's no way for someone to get that connection with the Quran that um, that is like that heart-to-heart -heart connection except that they learn Arabic of course we can take the um, the translations which are like translations of like it's like a commentary in English uh, for the Quran, this is something that helps bridge that gap for uh, for the people that are new. But of course, like learning Arabic and stepping into learning it, this is one of the best things that someone can do to save their um, to save their deen um, and to make sure that they aren't getting tricked by the traps of Shaitan and that they have this connection with Allah and His Messenger. And um, because of course, if you if you think about Allah has sent down His message for the last message of mankind and has spoke directly to mankind and um, and if you can't understand what he said, then there is like, uh, then this is something that is, uh, there's something that's missing, you know. And so like someone should have, a, especially uh, someone who wants to learn of what, what did Allah say and has a love for Allah, they will learn his language. And of course, if somebody gets married, like just uh, there's like a worldly example, which is very uh, weak. But if you were to get married to somebody, you fall in love with somebody, you, uh, you're, you, you love this person, you, you're married and whatnot but you don't want to learn their language so that you can understand what they're saying to you, then this is like, you know, most most people when they, if they have like a, a, a relationship in this way, they want to know the other person's language so that they can have that that conversation, that communication. And of course, Allah understands us in whatever language we speak, but to understand the Quran, we need to go and we need, we need to learn Arabic. And this is one of the things that will show us um, uh, what, what the Quran means and when we look at Arabic and we learn about Arabic, this is a, of course, it's a big subject, but this is something that Allah will benefit um, and make the, Allah, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever takes a path on the way to seeking knowledge, then Allah will make his um, path easy for Jannah. And uh, may Allah make uh, the path for Jannah easy for us. And of course, if, any, uh, if anyone has questions or anything, feel free to ask. Uh, Thank you.